Hello, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Life. My name is Julia Masoska. I'm your host. I am today so thankful to be uh, surrounded by this amazing person, Kara Sykes. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> Kara is an amazing illustrator, and we're super excited to be working on, or she's super excited to be working on some amazing illustrations for patterns, uh, for summer patterns today. So, uh, Kara, give us a little intro about yourself and what you're about to do. Yes. Hi, y'all. I'm Kara Sykes, and I'm based here in Burnham, Texas, a small town, and I am an artist. And I'm excited today, I will be working on some summer illustrations and it's gonna be kind of a choose your own adventure. So I'd love to get y'all's help picking which direction we go in. And also just wanted to say I'm a new mom, so I'm excited about that and yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so cool. Um, yeah, I'm glad to hear um, about everybody in the chat. Also, we have Jessica, Valdir, Cody, and Uma Korn joining, and Ferry is here, and Paco is here. Hi, Paco, Anika. Awesome. Cool. So welcome, everybody. If you're joining us from YouTube, make sure to head over to be.net slash live. This is where I'm reading the chat and this is where I'm going to kind of um, get, uh, get your questions for Kara. So um, yeah, make sure to put your, your questions into the chat on Behance. All right, Kara. So what are we going to be working with today? Uh, I, I saw we were working in Illustrator. Yes, I love Illustrator. Um, I'm actually going to be working on desktop today, but I have been exploring uh, the iPad a lot. Um, and so I'll be working in Illustrator. And uh, yeah, if it's okay, do, do you want me to go ahead and dive in or? Yeah, let's dive right in. Let's talk about what we're going to be working with today. And um, meanwhile, I'll, I'll start reading some of the questions in the chat or anything that comes up. Yeah, so I just kind of wanted to do a quick run through today of my process. And it's not always the same for every illustration project I take on, but because this time I wanted to be a little bit more uh, structured, I started with a mind map and kind of started thinking about what summer vibes felt like to me. So I started drawing this out in fresco. So this is just a image that I brought into uh, Illustrator just to show y'all. Um, so kind of did little extensions, fruit, fun, camp, sun, pool, these are water, these are things that kind of I thought about for summer. And then after that, I kind of was like, okay, what are we going to do? We're doing a pattern and it's summer related. Um, I wanted to pick two themes. I grew up in North Carolina and you would go west to the mountains and you would go east to the beach. So um, I wanted to know where y'all want to go on this little adventure today. I've written out some little objects that are possibilities and then we can kind of go from there. Um, and while we're waiting, I guess, to hear from the chat, I can kind of explain a little bit more of my process as well. Yeah, sure. We have Paloma here saying hi, everyone. Uh, love, love me some patterns. Love me some summer. Congrats on your new mom status, Kara. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Everybody's super excited for you. Um, thanks, Cody, for sharing uh, the Behance profile of Kara. Make sure to check her out and also make sure to check her out on her social media. Kara, would you like to show before we kind of jump in, would you like to show some of maybe your website or um, your Instagram page, whatever you prefer? Yeah, cool. Anika yeah. is saying ice cream encircled. Yeah, totally agree <laughs> for the summer. <laughs> I would like some ice cream right now. I don't know if I could stream really well with it, but um, so my work is very colorful I, um, and very bold. And a lot of times I like to make it feel happy or with like a dash of seriousness. So um, it, whether I'm doing like something that's activism related or something that's personal, uh, a lot of my work just is very, very colorful. Um, so here's my website, a little bit of what I do, a mix of Illustrator. Um, I've used Photoshop in my work as well for some of my illustrations. Um, I like to mix it up uh, and I, yeah, I like to have fun with it. Um, also, I have a Behance page and I stream on Behance as well, and I love it. Um, yeah. That's super cool. Everybody's saying let's go to the beach. Beach, beach. Oh. I like the West, but the but the um 
but the beach sounds fun too. Awesome. It looks like everybody wants to go to the beach. <laughs> All right, let's, let's do the beach. Um, something I was going to show y'all before, just to kind of get y'all excited about color as well. I've already got some colors picked out, um, but I wanted to show you a little thing I use and it's color.adobe.com. And it's so helpful because there's so many times where I'm just stumped on colors and there's just so many to choose from and it's hard to pick. So if you're ever having trouble, go here and you can pick through things like, I like the trends page because you can look at, say you're into fashion, you can look at different uh, color palettes from fashion. And I guess people in the community have uploaded these and created these um, to share, which is really awesome. and. Right now, I'm just going to actually show an example. I'm going to add this one to my library because it's really bright and I like it. And let me make sure that you can have libraries. And I'll show you all this in my process as well. So I'm going to add that to the library. There we go. Wow. Okay. Let's add cool. it. And now once you add it to the libraries, you can select the library that it goes to and then you can open the libraries in Illustrator, correct? Yes. So, and what's amazing about this too, is I like to talk about this because you can do it in Fresco. You can do it in like all of your uh, Adobe programs. Like you can get all of these colors available. These are all ones that I've saved here. So it's up in your library section. And I call this one Adobe color because these are all the ones that I've gotten from Adobe color. And you can go through and you have all of these selected and these can be in all of your programs. So then you don't have to worry about creating a new color swatch palette every time you work. Um, and it's a great way to make some cohesive work if you wanna do everything in the same colors. Um, That's so true. But let me, let's see, I'll dive, okay, so beach. Well, I did pick some of these objects for each one. So whether we went with mountains or if we went with beach, I did do some sketches um, to prepare for today. So we're going to the beach. Let's take a look at what we made. All right, so these are some of the objects that I will be working on today. So we've got a sand, a little sandal down here. We got some watermelon sunglasses, a watermelon popsicle thing. That looks so fun. It looks <laughs> so cool. I love it. <laughs> it's probably going to make me hungry or thirsty thinking about watermelon. Oh, um, yeah. And then we got some sunscreen because that's important. And then a little bucket hat thing, which might end up being the object that we apply the pattern to you tomorrow. Um, I cool. still have to think of that. I'd love to hear what people want to see a pattern on uh, that's beach related. I've got a few ideas, but it's always helpful to get other people's brains in the mix. Yeah, let us know in the chat. Cool. Um, there is a question by Ruth real quick. When it comes to illustrations, do you prefer Adobe Illustrator on the iPad or computer? Hmm. I think it just depends on the style that I'm personally doing. Although I kind of will be using that style today where it's more hand-drawn vector. Um, yeah, I guess it just depends on where I want to sit. If I want to sit on the couch or somewhere outside, it's amazing that I can work outside and be on my iPad. And then if I want to be kind of confined to my desk, uh, that's when I usually do desktop. But I will say I typically use desktop just because I like having everything kind of up in here, but I love the option to be on the go. Yeah, I love it. For me, I like to start with sketches, initial sketches, or maybe when I'm designing logos, I also like to do them in Illustrator on the iPad as well. Um, it's super fun when you can kind of create little um, drafts, like, uh, you know, a bunch of little drafts, and then you put them into Illustrator on a desktop. And it's super easy to save the file and it's right away kind of uh, um, syncs to your cloud, to your um, creative cloud. And then you can open the file in on a desktop and continue working on it. That's my process when working in branding. Uh, yeah, it's super fun. I love, I love the flow where you can choose whatever you want to do. Yeah. And the cool thing about libraries is also that you can just literally jump from one app to the other. And it's like so seamless. I love it. So right now I'm taking my sketches and kind of bringing down the opacity so I can see them while I'm working. Um, I'm using a multiply and in your layers palette, I click on this little circle and this picks everything up on here. 
Um, and then I'm going to lock this layer. So now I can't do anything to this layer to mess it up while I'm working. And I like to work underneath. I know some people like to work above the layer. Um, it's really just your preference and what, you know, some days maybe I'll work on top of the sketch and some days I'll work underneath um, while I'm working, let's see. Yeah, it's super fun when you kind of add color and then you can still see the outline. Yeah, yeah. and sometimes sometimes I look at that and I'm like, oh, I like that better than, <laughs> than it without <laughs> the outline. And then I'm, I'm, I get stumped. I'm like, oh, darn. Um, so one cool thing you can do with, so when you have your libraries here, you can right click um, and add theme to swatches. And so I'm going to add this one because I really like this green here. Um, and then I actually have two, two of these selected here, but what I'm going to do, I like to delete all of the swatches while I'm working so I can be more focused because I'm a very um, excited person and sometimes when there's too much, it's just a little overwhelming for me. So um, I like to kind of compile over here. Now, most of these colors are feeling a little bit kind of darker than what I normally work with, which we can play with that as we go. Um, yeah, I, I love do it. like, let's see, is there a way to make all of these global or do you have to do them individually? Do you know? Um, maybe if you try selecting them all, can you select them all and then? I wonder, oh, I think I have to do each one. That's oh, okay. okay. So I like to use global colors because uh, this way, Anytime you want to change these, um, say you, this pink, you're like, oh, I want it to be a little bit brighter or I need it to be a little more saturated. You can actually change all the pinks in your illustrations um, as you go. That's super cool. Usually when I try to recolor, there is also a feature that's called recolor artwork. It's It functions very similar. So there are different ways to solve things forest and everybody kind of finds their own way um you know to to find a solution for uh for their specific task that's so cool and we have some suggestions in the chat on what uh, where to apply the pattern we have sean oh. suggesting flip-flops we have paloma um suggesting a beach towel with a pattern Ooh. and uh pa and paloma is also saying umbrella or umbrella that would be also nice. And um, Annika is saying the sunscreen lady can have watermelon sunglasses too. <laughs> that sounds fun. I like that. Let's see, awesome. I'll just make this a little bigger. Oh, too big. <laughs> and there is also a quick question by Pavitra about your um, tools when you, while you work on a desktop, do you work with a drawing tablet or what, what are you, your regular tools? Oh, yes. So I connect my iPad, actually, um, which is funny because y'all were asking, do I use uh, desktop or um, or mobile? And I actually use the iPad on my desktop like a tablet. So I connect it through a program called AstroPad and um, it allows me. So when I start drawing here, I'm actually using an Apple pencil. Um, ah, that is smart. What's the app called again? It's called Astro Astro Pad, and it's uh, it's really nice because it does a little like zoom in of the screen. So right now, I on my on my iPad, all I can see is the um, juice box right here, and so oh. I'm able to kind of focus on that and zoom in on whatever I want to. Okay, so it projects your artwork onto the iPad as well, right? <laughs> That's it, so cool. I love it because usually my problem is when working with a tablet is that I'm not looking where I'm drawing. That's my, you know, that's my problem. And that's why I prefer drawing directly on the iPad. But if you can see what exactly you're drawing on, that's projected on the iPad. That's super cool. Yeah, I with the with the tablets that you have to look at the screen, I have sometimes I have a hard time doing that because um, I, I want to see exactly where I'm drawing. And I know so, so many people are so talented at not looking at it and just looking at their screen. I've always had trouble, even back um, when I was just using the, I guess it was the Wacom bamboo yeah. or a long time ago. Um, I'm so glad. And the Apple Pencil is so nice. It's It just gl it glides so nicely. Um, yeah, absolutely. 
Do you ever use a, like a screen cover where you, where it feels like paper? I think it's called paper like or something. Yeah, like that. I do. I use that one. I love it. Awesome. That's so cool. Um, so one thing I was going to say with, so I use, I use the pencil. To, uh, I always forget what it's called here. Let's see. The, is it the, I use the paintbrush tool sometimes here and that gives you strokes. So here I can have, I can play with the strokes of this. Um, but something I love using, and I don't know if a lot of people use it, but the blob brush tool. So um, it is shift B on a Mac and you can kind of play with the size. And so this is already just a fill. And I like to use it because it feels like I'm illustrating um, without having path paths, which is really hard to say, um, without having paths. So like um, drawing this watermelon, making it kind of slightly imperfect um, is something I really enjoy doing with, uh, with illustrating in Illustrator because a lot of times there's this, I don't know, I feel this pressure to like make perfect lines when I'm working in Illustrator because it can create such perfect lines. But using the blob brush tool, I'm able to kind of come in here and like create these lines that are a way that I wouldn't be able to do with paths, I think. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the art of illustration, right? Um, making something perfect and vectorized, but then making it look like as if it's like literally handcrafted and not changeable anymore. Right. <laughs> yeah. There's, and then finding that balance and, and everything. It's the challenge. I like the challenge. Yeah, um, I always I always add noise to my illustrations to make them less perfect. <laughs> that always that does it's really nice to add a little bit of the grain texture to it because it it makes it feel more. It's funny how it makes it feel more human. Um, these if y'all are watching and wondering what I just did to get the fill here to you, it's a little trick I do, and it could be, you know, there could be another way. But um, is when I draw the outline here. Which we'll see. Sometimes my hand shakes. I go in with the direct select tool and I select the inside and then I delete it. And so I'm left with the fill and the shape that I want to use. That's a really good tip. And then another thing to you, um, a lot of times I'll go in and create all the shapes first um, before even worrying about the color because it can get really distracting trying to find the perfect color palette. Even if you've already picked one that you think is perfect, usually throughout the whole thing, I change stuff as I go. Um, so I usually kind of start going and making the different shapes. Um, but I'm wondering, is there an object that y'all want me to start on and kind of focus on first? Yeah, let us know in the chat. Meanwhile, there's a question from Anthony. The shortcut was shift B for the blood brush. Uh, yeah. Shift B is for the brush, right? Uh, let's see. I think if you just hit B, you're going to get the um, the brush, brush tool. And then if you hit Shift B on a Mac, I'm not sure what it is on a PC, but it is Shift um, B on the Mac. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. And let us know which object would you like Kara to start with? Um, Cody's saying juice box. Um, Leland is saying popsicle. Awesome. Well, we can we can start we can start with the uh, since I'm working on the juice box juice box. <laughs> I don't know why I can't say that. Um, I will I'll start here and then we can make our way to the popsicle from there. Sure. Yeah, Anthony's also suggesting popsicle. We got two votes for the popsicle. We'll get there. We'll get there. I promise. <laughs> We just need to make all of them, all of them. They all look super yes. cool. So something else with the blob brush is I want to create another shape on top of this, but if I draw with the same color here, it's going to just kind of combine, combine it all together like a big blob, which is sometimes great. But if you want to have different colors, you have to go in and pick another one. So I'm just going to pick this green. It's probably not going to be the final color here, but um, this way you can see. So I'm getting the blob brush and bringing it in. And I'm so excited because the next tool I'm going to show y'all is literally, I think, 
I think I can claim it as my favorite tool in Ooh. Illustrator. So exciting. <laughs> um, so if you know the Pathfinder over here, um, Pathfinder tool is great. Uh, and it's really nice because it shows you what each tool does. But what I love to do, which I don't even know if you can get, oh, you get the shape builder over here in your tool section. Shape builder is this one, which is really small to see, but it's a, um, if you hover over any of the tools, you can figure out what tool it is. But I like to use the shortcut shift M and shape builder tool is also in uh, Illustrator on iPad and I love using that as well. So I've collected these two shapes and now what I'm going to do is hit option and I'm going to delete this little part right here. So now huh. we can, if we take the sketch off, we've got this little shape here. That's um, so cool. I love such it. a great tip. Thanks for sharing. This is awesome. <laughs> I think I feel like everybody kind of finds their little thing that they do differently than anybody else. And I feel like this might be your thing. I love I love the shape builder tool so much. And I love it. Oh gosh. I don't even remember when it I must have seen it on maybe an Adobe Live or something. I don't even remember when. I just discovered it, but it has made life a lot easier. That's super cool. We have a quick question from Ruth. Is she, uh, Ruth is asking, is it important to draw your illustration first on paper? Why do not start your illustrations um, right away on a computer? Just trying to understand why it does make a diff or why does it make a difference? Oh, well, actually I did this. I did these illustrations. They look like pencil. Um, I did this in Fresco, which is really nice. I think I'm a lot quicker on digital illustrations in general. Sometimes I force myself to draw on paper just to be present in that moment. But um, you do whatever I think is good for your process. I think try out try out every way because you never know what might surprise you. Um, but these are actually digital illustrations uh, brought into Illustrator. But a lot of times on my streams, I will start from scratch and just like illustrate straight to Illustrator and not have any sketches um, and just kind of play and go with the flow, uh, which is also a really fun way to explore. Cool. Yeah, Cody, good point. It's a personal preference. Some people like to draw on paper. Some people prefer go digital right away because then they can apply the colors and see, you know, how the shapes work with the color. Um, everybody kind of has their own technique. And um, some people even draw in Photoshop on, uh, on the desktop or um, even in Illustrator. So there are so many ways to, um, to sketch. That's so cool. I have also seen people who use a photography as, um, you know, as the inspiration source and they lay it underneath their illustration. So they basically illustrate on top of a photo, which also makes sense um, to do in Illustrator or in Photoshop. I love just that. keep in mind, just keep in mind that if you want, sorry, if you want to keep your illustration scalable, make sure to um, to draw draw in vector format. Sometimes, uh, if you draw in Photoshop, um, you draw pixel based with pixel based brushes. So those illustrations will not be scalable, right? So you will get the illustration just in the size where you uh, the, the the artboard was set up, basically. Whereas if you draw vector-based with vector-based brushes, which you can also find in Fresco um, and on, in Illustrator, of course, um, you'll be able to scale this illustration endlessly, which has a very uh, big advantage if you're working for, for clients. If, for example, if you're designing for a client and the illustration is part of a packaging, but then is being used on the website or on a billboard, you can scale that illustration the way you want and um, you will not get it uh, pixelated basically. So. Which is amazing because if you do draw something that you love and people are like, can I have a print of that? I wanna buy a print. And you think, oh, I made it three inches big. I can't make <laughs> it, I can't, I can only print it like that tiny and people want it as a poster or something. Um, you won't be able yeah. to do it. That's why it's uh, the best if you design or illustrate 
in vector format. Always make your file, right? Well, advice is always make your file probably bigger than what you think it's going to be printed at. Yes, for that sure. A lot of times I forget and I just do it digital, but. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Ferry saying I draw it on a piece of paper or my school not notebook. Ah. I miss I miss the days of drawing on my school notebook. <laughs> I used to draw a lot too when I was in school. I used to draw eyes all the time for some reason. I was always obsessed with eyes. I love drawing eyes too. I have one that like I go to that I do all the time. Like on um, so many of my illustrations, it's like a hat and I'll draw like an eyeball. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> that's so interesting. I guess eyes have like this weird depth in them that you can't really describe. And it's really hard to kind of put into, into a sketch. It's yeah, it's definitely a challenge. And quick question by Fairy, what is a TIFF file? Do you want to take that one on? Oh gosh, I actually don't know what a TIFF file is. I've used Ugh. them before, but I have no idea. Yeah, same here, but we can quickly look it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, usually, I'm, I'm not usually using TIFF files in my um, in my designs. What I usually use for vector formats are SVG um, and for pixel format without background, I use PNG and for pixel based um, with background or just a full image without any transparency, I use JPEG. I think those are the most common. And you can, of course, always use a AI file. For example, when I work with uh, in packaging design, you uh, usually submit the files in either PDF or in Illustrator format. I should know what a, a TIFF file is. I went to school for design, <laughs> but I don't. I don't remember taking a class on the different file types. Cool. Caroline is solving the mystery. Thank you so oh. much. <laughs> Saying uh, that it's an image saved in the tagged image file format. High quality graphics format. It's often used for storing images with many colors, typically digital photos, and includes support for layers and multiple pages. Ah, that's super cool. Thank you so much, Caroline, for, uh, for clarifying this. TIFFs can save transparency, Cody says. That's also good to know. And Clever is also adding, TIFF is a lossless image file type. Awesome. <laughs> and Caroline is saying, I Googled it. Yeah, that's what I would also do. You know, sometimes um, we know things, but we don't know them as much into depth. And we don't have to. We don't have to know everything because we are only one mouse click away from the uh, from the answer, right? Why, mm -hmm. uh, why saving so much knowledge that we maybe won't use? Or maybe we will use. OK, uh, I'm not sure if what's right or what's wrong. But fact is, we all have all this information at our you know one click away at our fingertips, literally. Um, and it's important to know where to look it up. I think, right? These days. I think so too. I, it's just, there's so much to try to memorize that it's really nice that we can give our brains a break, um, and search it on, uh, Google or wherever, um, or at the library, <laughs> which I haven't been to in forever. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, hopefully soon. Cool. And Carolina is sending us some more info on different uh, image files. So the PNG is the portable network, uh, portable network graphics format comes to comes close to TIFF in quality and is ideal for complex images. Unlike JPEG, TIFF uses uses lossless compression algorithm in order to preserve as much quality in the image to preserve as much quality in the image, I guess, as possible. The more detail you require in graphics, the better PNG is for the task. Hmm. Cody's saying I pretty much always save my work as PNGs. Same here. Uh, well, it depends. 
it depends but png is good if you have work with without background with transparencies <laughs> awesome Caroline is saying I, I'm on fire. <laughs> Caroline, you're you are a personal Google today. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I've seen I've seen there is there was this t-shirt that says um, um how do I say that? Don't ask Google, ask me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because they're cause, because they know every they've got like all the knowledge. Yeah, I guess <laughs> it's oh. a very it's a very um, uh, very big claim to compare yourself with Google. There's so much information out there. I just don't know how one person could know all of that. I I as a kid, I once looked to my dad in the eyes and told him. I know everything, <laughs> which <laughs> now I know is definitely not true, but I was very confident as a kid. <laughs> but you know what? I, I feel like kids have this nature of understanding everything by nature. They don't need no, well, they, they start asking at a certain age, but sometimes it's, a, it's about the feeling of something. And I feel that's so much deeper than knowing facts and knowing uh, rational uh, data. You know what I mean? yeah they they like can sense things yeah yeah it's quite interesting and i feel like babies they're so perfect <laughs> and they just become less and less perfect as they become grown-ups <laughs> they start to know too much or or if feel like they know too much maybe i don't know <laughs> yeah. make bad experiences <laughs> <sighs> or good experiences but yeah it's interesting definitely definitely cool all right what else we got here so what are we going to apply the pattern on we had some flip-flops we had the umbrella we had a towel we still need some suggestions from y'all if you have an idea where to apply a summer pattern let us know in the chat so Ida, Ida is now confused. What's better to export my work, TIFF or PNG? <laughs> oh, I would say, what would you say, Kara? Oh gosh, I don't know. I where would for if you're exporting it, where are you going to be putting it? I guess it just depends on um, application. For me, I always save stuff for whenever I post on Instagram, which is a lot of times my work shows up there. Uh, I do JPEG, but there's, I don't know, I feel like there's not an exact science to it, even though people say there might be, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, same here. I guess it's about the preference and your personal needs, but I feel like the most common could be PNG. As far as I know, maybe in the photography world, I believe the TIFF is being used a little bit more. Yeah, I feel like it would be the photography world. Depends what you're doing. <laughs> cool. James is saying, I'm a fan of the PNG and they can be transparent. Yeah. Whenever I design any type of logos or even if you're designing an illustration without a background that can be, for example, applied onto a different background uh, later on, um, I would use PNG there so that you have a transparent background. Otherwise, you can export your illustrations in JPEG format for social media at least. And um, always make sure to have the right resolution. Kara, <laughs> um, maybe you can share some best practices with us later on how to export uh, images, what the resolution should be for sharing online versus for print. Yeah, and with, with uh with Illustrator, they've got export for screens, which I love because you can have all of your artboards. And I can share that kind of um, possibly, I think I was thinking in my process tomorrow when I save everything out, I can kind of run through a little bit of that. Yeah, absolutely. Musna is saying, I love watching you while I'm doing my work. Yay, Musna. <laughs> it's like a co-working space. So you're working from a different place and you're working from a different place, but we're all together. I love it. Ooh. 
And Clever has another suggestion for for the pattern. Yes. And um, the suggestion is put a kite with a pattern. Ooh. And you would fly the kite at the beach. Yeah. I like that. One thought was oh. like one of those beach chairs, you know, that have the cute like fabric. Part of me wants to actually make one, but I don't know if I can physically <laughs> make one. <laughs> At least not on so, Adobe Live. <laughs> so I have a quick question for you. So all of these items that you're putting together on the pattern, are you going to apply only one of the items or are you going to apply multiple items and then distribute them? Uh, do you mean on, oh, like for, for a pattern or for mm -hmm. um, when it ends up? So what I'm going to do actually, and once I get... I want to make sure timeline wise, once I get at least three of these objects made, maybe two if, if we're running short in time, what I can do is um, show y'all a little glimpse into the pattern making tool, which I use a lot, um, and then play around with placement, which actually will help me figure out what else I want, what I need to draw tomorrow to complete the full pattern. Awesome. That's super cool. I'm so excited. And by the way, these are looking amazing. I love your color palette also. It's really subtle. Thank you. I, I can't decide if I'm going to want to like pump it up, make it like super bright or, or what, but that's the best part about the global color situation. Yeah, that's awesome. I don't know about this little sunburst thing. I don't think it's working. Maybe. Maybe we'll save it. it. I think it adds the pop to it. It's like boom, you know, that boom. <laughs> like watermelon, watermelon juice. <laughs> yeah. The exploding watermelon and while it explodes, everybody gets a slice. Ooh. That would be awesome. Um, cool. And we have Sumaya Deep joining us saying watermelon. Wow. Love the art though. Cool. <laughs> Welcome, welcome. Saying, I recently started working on some mock-ups and I must say it's a good learning process. Yeah. Cool. Samuel is saying no summer is complete without something from a girl. Oh yeah. yeah you know, great. it's funny with all these watermelons. What if we grilled a watermelon? <laughs> I know people do that. I grilled, was it grilled pineapple? It was really good. Oh yeah. That sounds delicious. I know we have a very controversial conversation about pineapple, especially pineapple on pizza. <laughs> and and people are very, uh, you know, different. Some people love it, some people hate it. And I've heard this conversation so many times previously on uh, Adobe Live that oh there, was a, <laughs> there was a watermelon pro or contra uh, fight. <laughs> oh my gosh. Cody Berry saying grilled pineapple on burgers is great. Oh. I have never tried it, but I must say it sounds very intriguing. I've never had that either. Sounds like what about... I'm gonna... Oh, sorry. Yes. No, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> sounds like I'm gonna be trying some grilled fruit soon. Yeah, we're all getting hungry. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Also, the distribution of the seeds is super important, right? <laughs> Usually, take them all out. <laughs> <laughs> Although seedless watermelon, I feel like don't taste as good as ones that have seeds in them. But you have That's to take true. the seeds out. By the color that you picked, it must be a really juicy, seedful watermelon with a very thin... Um, how do you call it? Peel, I guess. Oh yeah, the rind. It's yeah, uh right. oh I, I I saw this thing on I think it was on my Instagram reels or something, and they were telling you how to pick the right watermelon, and I should have saved it because it kind of had, I guess, the secret to picking the right watermelon. Oh, that's definitely a science. My my husband is always all about picking the right watermelon. He'll be like knocking on them. <laughs> So if it sounds right, it's, it's the right. He always says it needs to sound hollow inside. Yeah, but I've heard that too. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. It might be a myth. 
Um, I think I'm gonna add a little wood grain here. It's funny, this color palette, I'm probably gonna end up pumping up the colors a little bit, but it's working for me right now. Yeah, I think it's cool. It has like vintage vibes. I love it. Something I like to do too is create shadows on here um, by using the blending tools and stuff like that. So a lot of my art, if you see it, will kind of have this, um, I'll sometimes do flat without anything else, but then I also like to come over here and go to transparency and work with uh, multiply. And you can kind of create shadows um, throughout your whole illustration by multiplying with, I like to use the same color throughout so that all the shadows are the same. I don't know if that's like the correct way to do it, but that's kind of been my thing for a while. And I, I love adding just that kind of subtle shadow. So like what I would do here in this situation is highlight these and do shift M to get the, um, shape builder tool and then I get rid of this part and then I've got a little bit of a shadow yeah I love that that's super cool yeah you can't go wrong with that I, I think with the multiply tool you're just getting a darker tone if you're applying a darker color so can't go wrong with that Awesome. Cody's saying it sounds hollow. If it sounds hollow, it's ripe. Sounds hollow because the high water content. Ah, okay. So it might be true. Cool. I, I, Ayana is saying the vintage 90s summer camp. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's so true. Yeah, I love these illustrations. They do remind me of my childhood, to be honest. 90s kids. <laughs> Who else is born in the 90s? I'd love to know. I was born right before the 90s. 1998. I'm sorry, 19, 1998. That's not true. 1988. 88. 88. My, my numbers kind of suck. <laughs> but so I was raised in the 90s. Yeah, cool. I was born 1990. Yes. I love One when people... After you. Yeah, I love when people are born like on the, the zero, so then it's so easy to remember your age. <laughs> yeah, we had the uh, cord telephones and we had the cassettes and uh, whatnot. You know, we had a bunch of weird technology back then. <laughs> um. Oh, I always end up getting this, <laughs> the, the jeans thing comes up for me. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we'll see, how do I, oh, let's go to, basic up here oh no but <laughs> i don't <laughs> Looks know like this... we're gonna do some stitching today <laughs> <laughs> does i don't know if this ever happens to anyone else but it always happens to me let's see did oh. i get it right there we go okay yeah. so now it should be good when i draw there oh wait no <laughs> 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 it just wants me to draw jeans okay today. i think i think we're just gonna do jeans today <laughs> Okay, I'll draw with that first and then I'll select it there. Okay. Oh Illustrator likes likes jeans, I guess. <laughs> Illustrator's uh also born in the 90s. Is it? It's a perfect that reference. That would be funny. That would be funny. If if it actually, yeah, and then the 90s with the jeans. Now we need mm -hmm. some plaid. That's so good. Yeah. Oh man. Muzna is born in 94. Cool. James is the eight and is from the eighties. Old men here. Samuel was born in the seventies. By the way, I didn't say I didn't say old. James <laughs> say old. <laughs> but I think the eighties have been such a cool era, like such a cool time. Oh my god, I love the eighties music. It's so nice. I wish I was born in the eighties. I can't and, figure out when I wish I was born. There's so many different time periods that have things that have come back and we've been able to enjoy them, which is nice. Yeah, that's so true. Quick question by Ayana asking, um, are you working on one layer? I am right now I'm working on one layer, but I, I have quite a few different layers in this uh, file. So I can zoom out. Um, so right here. Uh, let's go to layers. Um, 
let's see, we've got, so this is my sketch, the beach layer. And I don't always label mine, but I did today so I could <laughs> help myself get around. Um, so these are the different layers that I'm using. And I do typically work um, with a lot of different artboards, but today I just figured I would just work on one so they'd all be together so I can see them all and hopefully make them all feel kind of a part of the same illustration. Um, but you can also add your artboards and things like that. But right now working on, oops, I guess technically two layers with the sketch. Mm. But the sketch is only a reference, right? You're going to be using the illustration layer by itself later on, right? Yeah, so I I don't really do a lot of layering in Illustrator because you can highlight and grab different things. Um, in Photoshop, I use so many layers, like to the point where my computer doesn't like me anymore because I have so <laughs> many layers. But in Illustrator, I typically kind of do it all on one just to keep it all together. Um, unless it's a really big project and say I'm doing a dot pattern or something like that and I want to be able to select all those without worrying about the other um, pieces, I'll do that. But usually you'll find me working on just one. Now, another question. Do you name your layers <laughs> regularly <laughs> when you work? <laughs> uh, in if I'm ever going to give it to a client something that has layers I will name them but if it's my personal work I typically don't um do it unless I really 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 need to know um yeah I get kind of I get kind of chaotic with my work and uh just just go 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 without even thinking um yeah same here, because you do want to kind of work as fast as you think, right? Mm -hmm. And that does not involve naming layers. <laughs> Usually when you're designing or drawing something, your thought process is not like, oh, how do I name this layer? <laughs> right? It's only, it's, I guess, for me, it's the same way. Uh, whenever I design, I design, you know, I usually... When, whatever I design, I usually have one file where it's just a big mess. And then I copy and paste some of the things into a new file where I organize things. And there <laughs> I might, you know, create layers and uh, in order to kind of share the file with a client or for review. So um, that's the only way I'm going to name my layers. But yeah, there are people who love to name their layers and I really admire it. I really admire the organization skill. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I sometimes I think, oh, would I, well, I'll start doing that. I'm going to start doing that. And then, you know, I do it a few times and then I forget the next time. <laughs> and a quick question by Samuel. I'm asking, do you prefer vector drawing or raster? I actually get this question a lot when I stream because people always ask me, why are you streaming in Photoshop? Why aren't you illustrating in Illustrator? And um, I, I think it just depends on the mood I'm in that day, honestly, because I sometimes like right now, this is super fun, the flow of Illustrator and not having any um, texture because I haven't really mastered the bringing textures and using texture um, vector textures. So what I love about Photoshop and working in like pixels is um, basically being able to use all those different brushes that we can download and play with different ones and get kind of messy there. And then in I kind of have separated the two for me when I work, but it kind of flows together too. If that makes sense, I don't know. <laughs> I I like both of them almost equally. Yeah. yeah. It's good. And it's always good to try new um, tools. You know, tools always get updated and they always get new features. And you might not have liked one, uh, one app a couple years ago, but then, you know, it has been updated with new features and it works better for your workflow. So it's always great, I feel like, to experiment with the existing programs on the market. So, yeah definitely worth trying something else. Okay. All right. 
All right, what else we got here? We have 70s, 80s, 90s in the chat. Um, Viola is saying my computer despises me. <laughs> oh, Viola, you must work in some really complex graphics. Um, Illustrator is pretty good at keeping each object separate, so it's not always necessary to use multiple layers, Samuel is saying. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. I feel like in Photoshop, it's a little bit harder to, uh, you know, if you have the objects on the same layer to really move them around by themselves, right? Yeah, and there's been some tricks I've learned with like the using, you know, you can have auto select on Photoshop. Um, something I recently learned was if you command, command click on something while it auto selects not on, it actually can make it auto select for you. I, I know that probably doesn't make sense without a visual, but there's been a few things that I've kind of played around with, like learning how to move layers in Photoshop. So it feels more like my flow in Illustrator. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's all about experimenting, trying out, learning the shortcuts. <laughs> cool. Shortcuts do you have a are awesome. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any tips for learning shortcuts? Um, I just like if you use a tool a lot, if you're constantly finding yourself going to one, like um you can go over and highlight. So I highlighted direct selection tool without clicking and it says A. So now I know that A is the shortcut for that. Um, and then it tells you on here, which is really nice. Uh, so if you use the tool a lot, you can kind of see. So the shaper tool is shift in, uh, scale tool is S. Um, so I, I think one of the biggest things, advice I wanna give anyone working in a program is like research all of the tools because there's so many things that might be helpful to you that maybe you haven't tried out yet and then when you learn it you're like this is ah uh, this is would be great for my flow you know yeah and i feel like there are tools that everybody's using by default but there are some tools that are really specific that some people or many people don't know. So I was even thinking once to do like a stream on, um, you know, mystery tools or tools that nobody's or many, many people don't even know about. <laughs> I think that would be super interesting. Yeah. And then cool. you'll get everyone in the, in the chat being so excited because they're like, oh my gosh, I, I never knew that existed. It's the best thing, <laughs> like the shape builder tool. I love it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The shape builder tool is used a lot in logo design for when you're creating those geometric logos out of shapes. I feel like that's uh, where I have seen it, but I personally don't use it a lot. I, I use a lot of uh, the pathfinder and uh, yeah, the pathfinder kind of gives me all the options necessary, but yeah, it can look really cool when somebody's working with a shape builder tool and then just like, goes along and just removes all the different uh small shapes from uh yeah from a big uh design cool all right cody bear you linked me a shortcut sheet once printed a bunch and hung them around my classroom samuel that's super cool that's definitely the way to go if you want to learn shortcuts just put them right in front of you. Just pin them on your wall, right in front of your computer. That can definitely help you learn them quicker if you see them all the time or pin them on your fridge. <laughs> I saw people learning uh, vocabulary like that. Yeah. Like the little cards. Yeah. And right. there's so many, honestly, watching a lot of Adobe Live too, you can see what other people do and um see if it works for your flow or not um and then of course like googling and youtube like any of these tools someone might have a tutorial out there for what they mean yeah absolutely ruth is asking what's your process when you apply shadows on your drawings how do you know where to add it i'm new with drawing illustrations so a lot of times, and I don't know, I heard recently that sometimes if you're left-handed, you like, you prefer the shadow on a certain side. Um, I typically draw my shadows on the right side as if the sun is coming from like 
from this angle. But if you look at a lot of my illustrations, a lot of the time I just kind of draw what feels right. So I'm not doing like technical lighting illustrations. Um, I love kind of playing with what this shape could be on this side. Um, it probably would be a little different than this, probably straight down or something like that. Um, but there's something that really is helpful is drawing kind of an arrow. So if you want the sun or the light source coming from this, you know that kind of this side of your object's gonna be in the shadow. Um, I don't, I don't typically do it from this angle. I don't know. It's a natural thing, I guess, to do from left to right for me. Yeah. And you can also learn how to apply shadow uh, by drawing objects. If you kind of put an object in front of yourself, put a light source from one side and then see where, which side is darker, which side is brighter, which, which side is the brightest. Right. And that will kind of give you the idea of three dimensional thinking. And I feel like that can also be a really good, um, you know, way to learn. That's how I learned, honestly, understanding three dimensionality. Maybe we'll make cool. this whole box yellow. Let's see. And then I'll have to go back and play with that. I like the brightness of the yellow. Yeah. It's so summery. Cool. All right. Cody's saying I'm left-handed and I always draw my shadows on the right. Hmm. And I'm also left-handed. There's, I wonder if it's, I don't know. It's, are there any right-handed people out there that draw your shadow the other way? I'm right-handed and I draw my shadows on the right. Maybe it's, maybe it's like, because we read at least mm -hmm. Maybe. Most languages read from left to right. It's like, or I don't know if it's most languages, but yeah. a lot of them. Um, it could be true. It could be true. I'm going to play with that. You want bit. to show the bright side first, right? So <laughs> you put the bright side, the, the one that you see the most, right? So it's so like on the hierarchy, on the hierarchy, on the first uh, place. <laughs> yeah, so that's the first thing people see. I if I yeah. Can do a little smaller burst here let's see yeah cody good tip uh studying objects in real life can help you see how the light falls into the shadow yeah absolutely luar is here from turkey welcome <laughs> wow i love i love how people come to daily live from all over it's just so cool i love it too yeah and I also love how these days you can learn illustration or design online. You don't even have to go to school anymore. You can learn, learn all of these things. I, how, how about you, Kara? Um, do you, how did you learn illustration? So I, I went to school for design, but I've been drawing since I can literally pick up anything that would make a mark anywhere. Um, my dad is a retired architect and um, so I think I went into design because it kind of had that like the mathematical kind of brain alongside of art and then I, I worked at an agency for a while and um, and did like as a graphic designer and um, then really just started drawing again I rediscovered it and realized how much I love it and kind of push myself more into the illustration like route, but I actually work as a design manager at a company. Um, so I'm able to at least still be kind of have one foot in design and then get my wild creativity out with my illustration. That's so cool. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a really nice uh, insight. And I feel like I was also on the stream with another illustrator recently, and she uh, was also working as a designer, but then she was starting off with illustration. I feel like illustration kind of starts off as something you might enjoy doing in your free time, but then, you know, people are doing it so much that they get really, they really dive into, into illustration and then they kind of switch to that being their professional, uh, professional career. So it's fun. I love it because I've 
So, I mean, I'm getting older, but my imagination still like is just as vivid or I try to like feed my imagination as much as possible so that I can continue creating work that's got like a little bit of that charm to it. And so for me, illustration kind of has always felt like that while I wish I could feel that way with design, but I always get more strict with myself. I think maybe because being like trained in school for design, I got kind of stuck in that way. So like illustration was is kind of an escape for me, which is really nice. Um, I know for some people, design is that for them. Um, I really admire people who can do branding and things like that because I'm just, I just am always in awe of like the things people create. Yeah, it's so fun. And I think one of the bigger challenges is, and I really admire designers who can do both, um, you know, the very strategic branding, um, very rational kind of side of design. And then the more, uh, you know, the side of, des- of art in design, which is, you know, can be illustration. And people who can combine those two, I think, are so, must, you know, must be so um, kind of flexible in their mindset because you really have to kind of turn around 180 degrees uh, when working in illustration versus strategical work in and branding. So it's super fun. It's cool. I love when um, kind of, I guess, people doing branding projects bring in illustrators um, and kind of work as a team because when you have the specialties kind of coming together, you can really collaborate and make something beautiful that maybe if you're just by yourself, it wouldn't, you know, it'd come out nice. But when you add someone else's specialty to it, um, I'm also saying this because I'm someone who wants to do everything. And (laughs) sometimes I have to remember, there's people who are really good at it that can help you too. (laughs) That is so true. Yeah, I've been always dreaming to collaborate with an illustrator on a design project, on like a passion project, a really, really fun one. Yeah, I might do that in the future. Sounds so fun. And you can kind of, since you were talking about wanting to learn or get more into illustration or learn more about it, it's a great way to learn more about it, um, working alongside of it with somebody who does it. Absolutely. That's so cool. All right. Samuel is saying, I learned how to draw pixel art before anything else. And it's pretty much an unwritten rule that the light source is on, on the upper left. Huh. Interesting. And Rebecca is also agreeing on, um, you know, drawing shadows on the right. Hmm. And we have Anna here saying hi. Hello, Adobe Life co-working. <laughs> hi. Yeah, it does feel like a co-working space because I feel like everybody's tuning in and some people might be working on something else while listening to this. And, and we're also working on something while being in different locations, which is which is crazy. I, honestly, I think it's it's insane that we're in different locations right now. <laughs> but um uh, but Anna is saying, I'm watching this while finishing a Behance project for my recent sticker design work. Ooh. Cool. Nice. These could, these would be fun stickers to you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. These could also be really good branding elements. It sounds like we have a collaboration <laughs> going. Hmm. <laughs> 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 That's so cool. Cool. Um, Samuel is saying the term design is ambiguous to me. My title is design lab technician. I'm essentially a designer, but I'm pretty certain it's nothing like what Kara does. I, you know, it is kind of, you never know when someone says they're a designer because like what they do, because there's so many different types of designers, like, um, and at my work, we have like product designers, as well and that's something that I am definitely don't know much about and I also sometimes see people designing um in XD and I'm like I don't I don't know that's probably the only program I don't really use because I don't do anything like that but I always admire people who can create interfaces and things like that XD is super cool I love doing animations in XD (laughs) 
You can do animations? <laughs> yeah, what? and it's super and it's super easy. So all you literally have to do is you literally could just like copy paste your illustration on one artboard and then and create a copy of the artboard and a second artboard to make a change. For example, turn the watermelon and then you connect and create uh, basically an interaction between the artboards and it can be a movement. So it will be a, a watermelon that will be like going back and forth. That's Super easy. Really cool. I love no timelines. I Oh, Sorry, yeah, no I was gonna say I love animation and that's another thing that I've like tried to add to my <laughs> list of everything I like to do but um I've had to cut back on that just so I can have a little more focus <laughs> it can be really complex it can be really complex like for example in After Effects you can even work with code to really program that um animation and the flow and so on so animation can be pretty intimidating but it's also fun. That's one thing. One time I did a stream on uh, on my personal live stream and I made an animation frame by frame in uh, Photoshop and without planning. And it was a really interesting, um, kind of felt like a brain teaser. It yeah. ended up, it turned out okay. I was, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of this. This is cool. <laughs> yeah. Photoshop is super fun for making GIFs. If you want to make like cool uh, motion GIFs. Love it. Yeah. Ruth, good question. Julia, do you ever collaborate with an illustrator, illustrated, illustrator designer for a packaging project? I would love to. So far I've been doing myself some illustration. But I noticed that, you know, as Kara said, it's, it would be great to have someone who is like super into illustration, who is very professional. And I'd love to do that in the future, but I haven't yet. But I have done illustration on packaging myself. Okay. And Anna is say, saying, I studied industrial design and I feel a bit restricted when creating something artistic and just for fun. I wonder how I can become more creative. Kara, do you have any do you have any tips? I think something that's really important and it's hard. I'm a perfectionist. You might not see that with like the non, you know, more of the blobby kind of illustrations I'm doing, but I think that's because I'm always like, this illustration has to be the best illustration in the world that I've ever done that anyone's ever seen. And like when you can start stripping that away and just like putting pen to paper, putting stuff and just doing it and and trying to allow your brain not to think like I think it allows it to kind of find a place of like peace that will let you make mistakes and then also you might be like wow I really like how that turned out I originally I would have thought of that as a mistake but now it's like the way I illustrate all the time you know um I think it's just trying to find that sweet spot of not caring but still enjoying it yeah, I totally agree. I feel like, you know, just like breaking the boundary of um, of restrictions just by working on something you're passionate about without any guidelines. So for me, I would, for example, work on, and by the way, many of the projects that I have in my portfolio are passion projects, just projects where I was like, wow, this needs to exist. And you know, I need to make this. <laughs> this is how it how it is. And then you don't have no restrictions whatsoever. There is no art director. You're the art director. You're you're making all the decisions for this uh, fictitious uh, maybe brand, maybe um, some type of illustration. Um, and and that kind of gives you the freedom to make mistakes and do whatever you want, right? So that's where you kind of break the boundary and and just create and start start doing stuff and I feel like maybe you know maybe painting I feel like painting usually makes you feel a little bit more deliberated right yeah because you can't you can't hit command z you have to just go 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 that's true and then you know also I feel like just making mistakes on purpose One if of you make a mistake 
Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go for it. Go for it. Now, I was just about to start like a story of like <laughs> how we, how, well, I went to design school as well. And um, I was about to st- start a story where the professor was trying to teach us how to kind of lose these boundaries and how to just like do something and then make something out of that. Basically, improvise. Where did you, where did you go to school? Um, I went to school in Germany, but I went to industrial design school. Oh my gosh. That's so I went cool. to the industrial design school and I never finished it because I learned that I enjoy graphic design and branding and packaging and all of that stuff. But it gave me some good fundamentals for, you know, packaging production and what's possible, what's not what materials are sustainable. So that knowledge I'm really, I'm really thankful for, to be honest, in my today's profession. Yeah, I feel like that gives you a different insight too, especially if you're work, like working with clients um, that are in the industrial design field. Um, you kind of have a different understanding while you're working with it. Yeah. That's so true. All Some of your life. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, all of your life experiences can like come together with whatever you're working with. You know, whether it's um, I don't know. I played soccer for like 16 years of my life, and so when I work with an athlete brand or an athletic company, I'm like, I had I come with that knowledge too. So it's really cool when you get to kind of work on something that um, brings brings something in like that. Yeah, absolutely. Having lots of different experiences, like you're saying, soccer, playing soccer for 18 years, that's a long time. You need to know the ins and outs. And if, if once you're working with a client like that, they really appreciate your background. So yeah, it's super fun. It's also cool if you're able to travel and see, experience different cultures. So yeah, super fun. Um, Samuel is saying, I had a student create an export an object from Photoshop for 3D printing. I thought it was pretty clever. Use, um, use un- unless dimensions start supporting 3D prints, PS is the only tool I can use from Adobe. Mm, well, there is Adobe Dimension. Oh, supporting 3D prints. Um, I believe there are different file formats that you can use for 3D printing. And if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, the object file could be one of those. Um, so correct use, me if I'm wrong. Yeah, can go you ahead. Use AutoCAD, can you? I think you can. One time I worked, we worked with a client, we were making these uh, cool like menu holders, and I built the, the thing in in illustrator and then we saved it out as an autocad file but i'm not i don't i i don't know much about 3d printing except for it was really cool to see it made yeah that's that's really cool yeah i think yeah you definitely can do that in illustrator build out a vector um shape and so on um well i do my 3d work honestly for branding and packaging, what I do, I do it in Adobe Dimension, which is the which is Adobe's 3D program. And there, I mostly work with uh, OBJ files, so .obj object files. But I'm not quite sure what exactly you can export from there. There might be some export options, but um, something to find out definitely. But yeah, you can totally use um, Illustrator as well. But if you if you say you solved the problem of Photoshop, why not? Everybody has their own kind of little tricks of how they solve problems. And honestly, you know there might be multiple tools that solve the same problem. It's just about all about you. What tool is more comfortable for you to use, and what um, yeah, what works in your workflow? Cool. Cody's saying, I know that feeling of perfectionism. I am always hard on myself when something doesn't turn out well. Only happy accidents. Yeah, that's um, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Bob Ross. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I love Bob Ross. Cool. 
And I sang in our case, you were always forced to think about a purpose before creating anything. And sometimes you spend more time preparing for the project rather than working on creative on the creative part of it. Yeah, I can totally agree. Industrial design can be uh, really um, a lot into like making prototypes, making uh, thinking about the functionality of something more than um, just making something. You know what I mean? So whereas if I would go to the workshop, I would design like a 3D model that's based off um, that's based off measurements that I've put myself together and maybe a sketch. Uh, when you're creating, for example, a sculpture, it's all freedom, right? So that's more on the art side of things. And industrial design is more rational. But that's something I really liked about it, that you can put rationality into um, into art with functionality. And that's the interesting part about, you know, product and industrial design. Did you growing up did you like customize all your your stuff like I feel like I don't know I feel like if you were in product or you said industrial design I, I imagine kind of you being like I don't know this backpack could use this and then you like add something to it or or anything like that not that but I was a big time lego player big time it was my favorite toy ever. I, I wasn't even playing a lot with like girls, um, girls toys, like Barbies or anything like that. I did have them because my family thought, I guess I should have them, <laughs> but um, I was big time, big time Lego. I love and, Lego so much. Yeah. And I think that can also really um, kind of build out a sense of, imagination you know imagining 3d objects that don't exist yet by putting pieces together that are actually meant meant for something else i remember when lego started out it was a very uh, abstract toy so you can literally you could literally build anything out of these colorful blocks these days i feel like they're objectifying it more making it into like i guess they'll sometimes do franchises of movies and like things that exist I guess to get more people excited about buying them um because I think when I was younger they were mostly you would get just a collection of them and you had to do whatever you wanted with them yeah exactly but I loved the Star Wars ones this watermelon has too many seeds <laughs> there we go I can do a quick demonstration of um, global color since I talked about it earlier and didn't really show how it works. Um, and we can, we'll switch probably the red back because I do like this red that's happening, like a juicy red. But if I click on it here up in my uh, swatches and I click on preview, everything in this art piece should turn, um, let's say we wanted to make it this magenta color. So then now I don't have to go through the process of selecting everything that's red. I can just kind of preview the art. Um, say we wanted a blue watermelon and we went into space and, and this is what watermelons look like. You can make them blue. You can play around with color. Um, a really great chance to kind of see if another color works better um, in those spots. Oh, we are going to be back in one minute.
guys, we're back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I guess my computer had to restart, uh, take a little break. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're back and um, continuing in the same passion and the same energy. Yes. <laughs> Carolina is saying, I wish I was a Lego girl. Oh, I remember Legos back then were so expensive and I had to collect them from like little um, kits from, I believe, Milky Way. And there were like little packets of tiny animals that what? I was collecting. I know it's so crazy, but it was so unaffordable for us. I, I was, as a child, I was in the Ukraine, so. <laughs> they were, Legos are still pretty expensive. Um, yeah. And I, I can see why, you know, it'd be hard for parents to get them for their kids. Yeah. But I guess like it was also very interesting to collect piece by piece because it would, it would always make it exciting for me when my mom would come back from work. She would always bring me one of those packets with a tiny animal. And um, it was it was good. I love that. You kind of have the, you, you get the patience of like waiting for what you can create, which I think nowadays with like everything being so, you know, you think about the future, are we going to be able to 3D print what we order on the internet? I don't know, but <laughs> I feel like we get stuff so quickly. Um, I live in a small town and so things are a little bit slower here. Like we can't get things, you know, in a day, but um, it is everything's so instant yeah that's true what is your favorite animal do you have a favorite animal oh yeah <laughs> so um as a child i always loved monkeys i thought monkeys were so funny whenever we went into the zoo because they're so close to humans <laughs> right um, but these days, I think my favorite animal is the dog. Aww. Since I have a dog, I, I love dogs. Oh, they're so cute. What about you? Well, so I used to be obsessed with dogs. And, and then now we have a cat and I love her so much that I feel like I'm a cat person now. But <laughs> you mentioned dogs and it made me think about um, I went to a zoo one time and I saw they're called like wild dogs and they're so beautiful. I, I'm not quite sure where they exist in the world, but they are so beautiful and they have these huge, cute ears. That's so cool. Yeah, I might have seen them in a documentary once as well. There are some really nice wildlife documentaries out there. There's that new one. I haven't seen it yet, but it's about all the animals thriving since people weren't traveling. Um, and I want to see that. Oh. It's like, what's it called? I, it's like something, oh, but the pink, there's penguins in it and they're really cute and they're walking around oh. the town. It's just like, uh, animals are so cool. Yeah, I love that. And you know, today's technology is also crazy because um, these days it can take even like nighttime recordings. I have seen one recently, um, it was recorded by night. So they were finally showing um, animals activity by night, which is super interesting and so different. I feel like they're so active at night. We have some cats that we feed um, and one of them, we kind of claim him as like another of our cats, but he's kind of, you know, he can do whatever he wants. He lives in the world. Um, but uh, I know that they're up at like 2 a.m. I just know it. They're out and about doing stuff because during the day they just sleep all day. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we have a lot of dog lovers here in the chat as well. Let us know what's your favorite animal. That's actually a great question. Um, and Clever is saying African, African wild dogs. Um, those are the ones that you were talking about, I'm assuming. And Cody is saying um, African wild dogs. Love those. Yeah. Yes. That's it. That's the one. So cool. And Ruth is saying, okay, I'm in love with these watermelon sunglasses. I want a pair for myself. <laughs> I love that. Let's make it happen. I bet you I they have to exist somewhere. I don't know. Maybe not. They have to. And if they don't, we make it happen. 
here on Adobe Life. I know. Who here in the chat works for a company that makes sunglasses? <laughs> good one. That's a good one. Yeah. You need to get in touch with Kara. She has a, an amazing sunglass design for you for the summer. And we have Marty here joining from North Carolina. That's awesome. my mom. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Hi, Welcome, mom. mom. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. I love it. My mom used to watch my streams in the beginning too. <laughs> but now she's like, Julie is streaming again. Do I have to tune in again? <laughs> I'm like, okay, mom, it's, it's fine. I imagine, I, I just imagine your presence. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I know you're here, mom. <laughs> yeah. You're in my heart. Cool. Uh, Cody is saying my favorite animal is a bear, but has nothing to do with my name. <laughs> <laughs> and Marty saying, I love giraffes. Cool. Yeah. Uh, it's been so long. I, I haven't been able to catch Cody streams in a while. I I miss watching Adobe Live. I used to watch it while I did client work, and now with um, my full time job, I I kind of I work in silence sometimes, which is weird, I guess. But sometimes that's how I focus. <laughs> yeah, I love to listen to something on the side, and you know sometimes I feel like people who are usually used to work in the office usually used to hearing background, uh, you know, talking, people talking about design or colors uh, or complaining about something not working or, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I feel like that kind of side conversation can feel really comforting to people who are used to that. Someone told me about this website. You can like create your own background noise. So it allows you to pretend like you're in a coffee shop and oh. you can like... You can like turn up the clanking noises or you can get rid of those. You can have rain noises. You can have um, bird noises. I, mine, when I did that one day, I did, I was like a lot of rain, a little bit of bird noises and like slight clanking of dishes. And it was actually really soothing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. We need to, we need to know that website for sure. Cool. And Cody's saying, by the way, haven't streamed in a while and in quite a while, actually. So you probably haven't missed a lot of the streams that you think you missed. So I haven't missed them. Well, I miss you, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And Afroja is joining us. Hi. Good to see you. Hello. Ruth is... Ruth is saying, oh, God, I feel so nervous if I know my mom's watching my live streams. <laughs> I don't even have her on my social media accounts. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. My mom's far away, so I'm always happy when she can be there. Cool. Paloma is saying, yeah, they have a site for the office sounds, too. Oh, maybe, maybe that's the site. I don't know if you, I think it's, what was it called? I think it was like hipster, hipster sounds or something. I don't know. It was something hipster something. <laughs> and oh, that's cool. I love, I loved listening to the different ones. Um, and Cody's saying there are some on YouTube called atmospheric sounds. And we have Anna here, Anna Julia here from North Carolina, Charlotte. Oh. My favorite animal is the panda. Oh yeah, pandas are cute. Pandas are cute. They're fun to draw too. All right, I think, I can't tell if I need to put something so it looks clear here, but I, design wise, <laughs> this is feeling funky. So I'm just gonna maybe some like highlights, like you know, like oh, those stripes. Oh yes. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I'm I saw missing. you putting some highlights on the um on the juice box Let's earlier. See. Oh yeah, I, I put a little bit here and then I need to put let's see, maybe something like if I can make oh, them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is so cool. It adds the bling 
to the glasses, <laughs> the shininess. And then now all I can think of is that Harry Styles song, the watermelon song. <laughs> Maybe that's why I drew these because that comes on all the time. Oh, maybe I'll grab these, do the same ones. Yeah, usually the reflection repeats each other, right? Cool. Yay! Getting some cool so, glasses. Oh man, I wish I had those two. And then everything in the world would be slightly tinted. Actually, I did read somewhere that red tinted sunglasses are good for headaches. Oh. So if you get headaches. You might not want to be working in design when you have colored glasses on because they will make your the colors different and then you'll finish and you'll think, oh, what did I do? Uh, That's so true. <laughs> that is so true. I recently got like blue tinted glasses. N not blue tinted, but they're not supposed to let through the blue light. But the quality was not as good. And then my the colors that I saw are different from what they actually are. So that's not a good recommendation. <laughs> yeah, and then I think, I don't know if y'all are working on in Mac, but they've got like, um, it's called night shift. And so it actually changes the tone on your screen. So if you're working at night and it's a little more, I think it's yellow so that the blue light doesn't hurt your eyes. I actually take that off because, because I wanna see the colors as they, should be but i know for some if you're not working on design or anything that requires color concentration it is nice on the eyes oh yeah that's so true basmala is here sorry i'm late no worries it's good to have you here <laughs> cody's saying funky fresh yeah that's definitely a good description for those glasses <laughs> cool yay let us know where y'all are tuning in from. And we haven't asked in the beginning. We can ask now. Let's see. Yeah, I love, I always love hearing where people are coming in from. And it's always surprising when someone's actually like closer than you realize. You're like, oh my gosh, I live like in a town over. Yeah, that's true. I am currently in Denver, Colorado. And I just moved here from Miami, Florida. <laughs> oh my gosh I that is actually a very different <laughs> those are two different places <laughs> yep two wow. different places and a 27 hour drive oh my gosh <laughs> yep <laughs> fairy is here from Indonesia and it's 1 a.m there fairy I hope you're a night owl because I know it's <laughs> late but thanks for being here with us so late and Caroline is here from from New York City Yes. I oh. want to go back to New York. Uh, it's been so long. Yeah, Ruth um, is asking again about the software to connect your iPad to your computer. And yes, Cody, thanks for answering that. It's called AstroPad. I ha I'm going to have to explore that too. It looks so fun. Yeah, it's really nice too, because, you know, I always wanted one of those, I think it's like the Cintiq, the really big one, the Pro, but my desk is really small. So, you know, I, I kind of thought, okay, well, I have an iPad and it does a similar thing. And and so I ended up just kind of, you pay a subscription um, for it. And I figured, well, I'll get that instead of having another piece of technology, because I have you get you get to have too many pieces of technology sometimes yeah that's true sometimes the simpler the better and then we have um also gabriela from poland and we have lisa from miami florida cool <laughs> where i just moved away from but yeah miami is beautiful i love it and the food is great the food is awesome and then we have James here from Arizona and we have Anna here from Germany, but originally from Ukraine. Ooh, cool. I'm also originally from Ukraine and I lived 18 years in Germany and moved to the United States like four years ago. Cool. 
That's so interesting. That's so interesting. <laughs> we have somebody here who has the same past as me. <laughs> And it's a very specific, you know, it's a yeah. very specific places to live. I love that. Yeah, that's true. That's so cool. You're like, are you also streaming right now? <laughs> <laughs> and we have Jim here from Jamaica. Oh my God. I want to go to Jamaica so bad. I love the food. <sighs> Cool. Ferry saying I made a good morning coffee sticker last week in Illustrator. That's good to know. I'd love to check it out. And if you haven't yet, make sure to follow Kara Sykes on Instagram. If you go into the, do you have your Instagram linked to your Behance? Probably, right? Yes, I do. Cool. Um, I so had to head over. <laughs> I was like, head <laughs> over. Cool. So in the description under the video, you will find Kara's Behance link, or also you will find it, I believe, in, yeah, in the info, info tab above the chat, you will find Kara's Behance. Head over there. You can follow her on Behance and also make sure to check out her Instagram. She has some amazing work there. Thank you. I'm like, try it. When, whenever people say nice things, I'm like, I oh, can't. <laughs> <laughs> because you, you all the feels, the feels. Yeah, you want to like scream it out like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And Leticia is here from Brazil. Awesome. I love Brazil. Oh, I love Brazil. I went there last year. Cool. And Anna is here. I spent eight, eight years in, in South Korea and now trying to get used to European life again. Wow. That's crazy. South Korea. That's, that's insane. Man, girl, you're, you're traveling. You're all over the place. That's great. And we have uh, MBA Khan here from Karachi in Pakistan. Awesome. Thanks, Cody, for sharing Kara's IG. Everybody go follow her. Awesome. This is coming along so nice. I love the um, I love the pattern on your sandals. Thank you. I was like, I didn't we're, all of this turned out to be watermelon y. So I was like, all right, the the black kind of the checkers vibes off of the seeds and also kind of that picnic picnic blanket vibe um which i've never had a picnic blanket look like the ones that are always drawn in cartoons but i feel like it's about time to get one <laughs> yeah oh man yeah picnic blankets oh you can make a picnic blanket with your pattern I like the oh my gosh wait yes that just that I was like wait that would be great to put that in the background but then making <laughs> it an actual picnic blanket would be so cute or you could make a picnic blanket illustration and put it as a pattern on a picnic blanket how cool would that be <laughs> and then it just keeps it keeps yeah. like <laughs> expanding that's awesome uh, like an inception or making tiny sandals and putting them on a sandal. And then and those then tiny sandals things. have sandals too. <laughs> <laughs> and it just keeps going. Oh my gosh. That would be hilarious. I would definitely buy that. I'm trying to think of how, um, how tiny they can get before you can't recognize them. Yeah. Caroline is saying, it's funny, I discovered Kara's work last week while watching Whitney Anderson Adobe Life. The, really? um, they, asked, they asked what designers she's been insp uh, inspired by at the moment, and she mentioned Kara. Oh, that's so cool. I know Whitney. What? Whitney, making me tear up over here. Yes, we are <laughs> internet friends. I don't even remember when, but I followed her forever ago, I feel like on uh, Instagram. 
And I saw that she was here last week, I think. Oh, that's so cool. For soon, I can't remember. Yeah, Whitney has been on Adobe Live before. She's awesome. I love her illustration style too. God, her lettering too. That is something that I just always amazed at people who can, you know, just like hand letter and stuff. And that is just, that's not something that comes naturally to me. And I've tried it a few times and it's just, I struggle with it. So I tend to stay away from it. But when I see her work and people who do lettering so beautifully, I'm always like, should I try it? <laughs> yeah, sure. Of course you should try it. Why not? <laughs> I always say, try, try the things that you want to try. Oh, I'm really liking these. I think I should get a pair of these too. Let's just, let's just make a whole outfit. <laughs> Yay. That's a cool idea. I love that. <laughs> you could wear oh. these accessories <laughs> and wear the patterned outfit. That oh has the yeah. Pattern. That's so cool. I love that. Oh my God, you're a genius. That, that's so cool. <laughs> I love it. I wonder, I don't know if you've seen those sandals that actually, they have like a curve. They're supposed to help posture or something like that. <laughs> I feel like yeah. these need to have a little, no, I like, I'll keep, I'll keep this water. I'll keep <laughs> <laughs> To make it like a watermelon, like a, like a slice <laughs> of watermelon. That would be so cool. That would be so fun. Best thing about digital work is we can we can always do this and then see what it looks like. <laughs> oh my god, no way. Uh, yeah, I, I I do want to see that. Yeah. Oh my god, that's so cool. I love this idea. Fairy saying watermelon sandals. Yay! Oh, Whitney's here. That's so cool. Hi. Hi, fellow hey. designer, illustrator. Oh, hello. Yeah, she's here. She's watching. It's like, oh, hello. <laughs> I don't know why I said, oh, that's just, that, that does not look comfortable, but. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks so funky. It's like those shoes with a, um, um, with aquarium, with a fish tank in them. Oh, Have you yeah. seen those? <laughs> it's just like really funky, not functional at all, but really funky and fun. <laughs> Those would be difficult to get around in. I cannot walk in heels at all. I've tried and I've been in weddings that I have to wear them and I just, I'm not graceful, but you know, that's totally fine. <laughs> yeah. It's not even good for you, so. <laughs> not good for your feet, not comfortable, so. <laughs> Cody's calling them moon moon boots. <gasps> yes, moon boots. <laughs> All right, let's see how we can do a shadow here. It's going to get interesting cuz I'm just going to kind of make it up and we'll see if it looks good. I feel like that's half of what I do. Let's just see <laughs> if it works. Let's just make it up. Let's just make it up and see if it looks good. <laughs> I love it. That's so cool. And when it does, you get a little moment of a little uh -huh. moment of joy. Yeah. We'll just keep it like this for now. What I can do yeah. is it looks like somebody kind of stepped into like water oh, or something. Yeah. But it looks cool. It makes it gives it some life, you know. It, it's not that perfect uh, shape anymore, perfect uh, uh, tone over uh, throughout the shape. So it looks great. Maybe they stepped on a watermelon. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like as someone who recently got into, I don't, I hadn't eaten watermelon a lot until I moved to Texas. And then I just, I eat a lot of watermelon now. My wife is obsessed with watermelon. So we always have it. So I'm like, okay. That's so cool. It. Yeah, watermelons are really good for you. They they are very hydrating, especially in the summer when you can have it nice and cold. There we go. I don't. Oh, I have some. I have some doubles here. Oh. 
Oh, maybe because I hit option. If y'all cool. don't know, option drag is pretty great if you want to repeat something. So you just option and then drag. All right, this is looking awesome. I love it. We have about 10 minutes, a little bit less than 10 minutes left. So um, yeah, if you wanna kind of wrap up some things and if you all have any questions, any last minute requests or questions that you wanna put into the chat, feel free to do so. So Cody's saying ju juicy watermelon shoes. Oh my God, I love it. This is so fun. Maybe they smell like watermelon too, so they never smell <gasps> that. They just smell good all the time. <gasps> oh yeah. Sorry, what um, were you about to say? Oh, I was just gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this into the pattern maker, but I probably, this will help me kind of decide about tomorrow what I what elements to bring in. And I will be bringing in the sunscreen that I didn't get to uh, finish illustrating, but I'm also gonna be kind of in a hat. Um, so I'll be working on those tomorrow, but I also might bring in a few different things just by looking at it in the pattern. A lot of times when I'll want to see if there's spots that I need to like fill in and mm -hmm. um, by doing that. So I'm going to grab all these and go up to object and then go to pattern and make. And so we are creating a new swatch, which sometimes I like to work. Actually, let's get out of here. I'm going to go up here to this gray area. This is how I end up working so I can see everything visually. Um, and so welcome to the pattern maker. Yay. Which, it's so cool. And it takes the ease of kind of trying to figure out what parts you need to cut um, and kind of play around with things. So that was objects and then it was pattern and make. And so right now I've got my objects that are gonna be in the pattern. And some of these I might end up resizing so that they can kind of have a, a similar vibe and sizes. Now mm -hmm. they're not true to life because these sunglasses, I think, are really big compared to there. But um, you go over here to your, I guess, I don't know what you would call this, your pattern options. Uh, yeah. what, do you, what do you call yeah. the little like widget pattern things? Panel, like a yeah. panel. Panel. Yeah. Panel. Pattern options panel. <laughs> That's how I would call it, yeah. This is your this is your life force here. So you can create. Let's name this pattern watermelon because <laughs> I'm getting really creative here. Watermelon, and we'll just name it one just for for now. Um, and this way, when you're in the swatches, you'll see that. But you can pick different things like grid, which will make them tiled, basically like the the uh, checkered pattern that I have there. You can do brick by row, which um, kind of does a brick layout pattern. And then you can do brick by column. So then it's the bricks going vertically. And then there's this one, like a hex by column and hex by row. Sometimes I like to use the hex, hexagonal one. I, don't, <laughs> I feel like I'm just making up words. But because it <laughs> creates it in a way that feels a little bit more, um, less of a super repeating pattern, I was kind of doing some research before coming on the stream to make to figure out about how many objects I need to create to make it not feel like you just all see the juice box like that it feels very um, complex and kind of have more depth. So the hex by row I really like because it it patterns them in this way. But what's really nice is you can play around. Um, but if you want to do it by grid or by brick, you can do size tile to art. So now when I go like this, it pushes things around. So uh -huh. you can kind of just start to dance with how you want your pattern to be. Um, maybe you want this to be sideways or down, which now I kind of put myself into some trouble there with pattern by adding shadows, because you know if I end up turning this one this way, it, it really, all the pattern now the shadows are in different spots so it's not you know i guess correct even though who needs correct let's just do it um, we're having fun here <laughs> so i'm just kind of playing with these and what's really amazing is you get to watch your patterns 
come to life. So if I feel like these are getting to be a good spot and I like the way that these are interacting, what I can do is come over here. Okay, so I'm gonna click, double click out of here and then I'm gonna come down here. Let's make a new artboard Do -do -do. really quickly. Let's see, there's a new artboard. I'm gonna add the pattern to, oh, I was on a locked layer, so it wasn't letting me. Um, I'm gonna add the pattern here. Ooh. And then I think while I'm working tomorrow, I'll have a pattern up so I can kind of figure out, okay, if I add something here, does it fill that space yeah. nicely? Um, so you can kind of so play with that. So you're building a pattern and then you're filling in the gaps that might be there. That's a good idea. That's a really good, good tip. Yeah, that's a good one. I feel sometimes I get stuck where it's literally just like glasses, 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 glasses. And this way it will let me kind of start to think of it as elements working together and like figuring out how I can fill in the spots and make it feel the word that everyone uses organic, uh, you know, and flow together really nicely. Um, and one quick thing I learned recently was if you click on the swatch, you can go over to appearance. Um, and I was always like, how do you add a background color? Uh, because there's some things that kind of, I haven't figured it out completely, but um, you can add a fill here. I think this is correct. We'll see if it works. Yes. Okay. Okay, cool. So you can add a background. So what we can do is like kind of figure out what background color we want to use. So I think that's going to be a part of um, tomorrow's stream is, ooh, okay. I like that. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's <it's> so <laughs> retro. I love the color palette. It just works so well. Like literally a couple of the, of the tones that you just picked. I'll work here because it's just so like down to earth and like really subtle. That ended up working out better than I was expecting. So I'm excited about that. Um, cool. So let's <laughs> talk about what are we going to do tomorrow and wrap things up. We have, I believe, a minute left or one and a half minutes. So um, yeah, what's the what are the next steps? Yeah, next steps are going to be finishing out some more objects. And then I think once we put them into the pattern and play a little more tomorrow and then fill in the spots that feel like they're gaps, what we'll do is I'm, I'm going to come with some like stuff that we can apply it to and just see what that looks like. Um, they'll probably be illustrations of the objects instead of like an actual T-shirt or an actual something. But um, that way we can see it in action and see if it would actually work on those objects. So. Yay, I'm so excited. And so today we're working in Illustrator. Tomorrow, what's the plan? What are we going to be using? We are going to be using Illustrator still. I haven't decided yet if I want to try to mock it up in Photoshop or if I just apply it to a, a fake object here in Illustrator as well. OK. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm super excited what you're going to come up with. And I'm sure there is a lot of uh, room to experiment. So everybody in the chat, by the way, is saying this is epic. Um, people are so excited about tomorrow and they're thinking that uh, your pattern so far looks really cool and loving it and so cute. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> there are a lot of different things, uh, but in general, everybody's loving what you're doing. Everybody's excited and I'm too excited for tomorrow. Thank you so much, Kara. And I'll see you, we'll all see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Yes, thank you so much.